Moving on, let's tell you more about the Indian Space Research Organization's next big mission. So hot on the heels of the lunar landing success, the ISRO is all set to now go for another big feat, which is of course the Aditya L1 mission. This mission will be the first space-based Indian observatory to study the sun. It also aims to provide unprecedented insights into the sun's behavior by placing itself at a point which is about 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth and 148.5 million kilometers away from the sun. But how does the spacecraft reach at this point? So the Aditya L1 will perform three Earth-bound orbit-raising maneuvers to ensure that after each step, the orbit becomes more elliptical. Aditya L1 will use Earth's gravitational field to perform these maneuvers and later by using onboard propulsion, the spacecraft will then start towards a point which is called N1. If all goes according to plan, Aditya L1 will enjoy an uninterrupted view of the sun and study in real time its effects on environmental conditions in the vicinity of Earth and other planets as well. If the mission is successful, then India will be one amongst a very small group of countries which are studying the sun. China, Japan, US and Europe are the only ones to have launched the mission to study the sun. Let's also take a look at uh, some of the other factors uh, about the solar mission. So the weight of the satellite which will travel to point L1 is 1500 kilograms. L1 is this tiny point between Earth and Sun where the gravitational pull precisely equals the centripetal force required for this orbital maneuver. It will take 100 days for the spacecraft to reach this point L1 and then enter this halo orbit. The satellite will revolve in a three-dimensional orbit between the Sun and Earth which becomes possible due to equal gravitational pull as I mentioned. The satellite will revolve at this point which is about 1.5 million kilometers away from the Earth and uh, this will make sure that of course India gets a lot of data as far as this site is concerned. Seven payloads are also on board the PSLV XL rocket which will help the spacecraft reach there. The big question, uh, of course, is whether India can be successful, but we are also joined by a very special guest who will tell you all you need to know about India's sun mission. G. Madhavan Nair, former ISRO chairman, is joining us uh, to talk more about this. And thanks a lot for your time, sir. There are many questions or uh, possible mysteries about the sun. But what are those big questions that scientists like you are grappling with that this mission can answer and how does that benefit uh, the ordinary public? If you could explain that in layman terms. Well, you know, the entire globe, hmm. uh, the planet, uh, the existence of the uh, living beings on the planet Earth, the water resources, mineral resources, everything is dependent on the sun. Mm -hmm. So to have a clear understanding of the sun is very, very important. We have a number of observatories on the ground, mm -hmm. but uh, they are affected by the clouds and uh, dust particles and so on. And continuous observation also is not possible. Mm. Uh, whereas if you go to outer space, there is opportunity to look at the sun in detail. So this is something which has been in the mind of ISO for quite some time. And initially they thought that uh, we would place a spacecraft around mm. the Earth, which can be looking at the sun and the Earth simultaneously, hmm. and then trying to understand the coupling phenomena between the Sun and the Earth. But later, uh, the study showed that uh, our rockets are powerful enough to carry the spacecraft to the Lagrangian point. Hmm. That is, uh, somewhere uh, away from the Earth and the Sun, where the gravitational pull of the uh, Sun yes. and the Earth balances, hmm. and it's a stable location where the platform can be positioned with least energy. So that point was located and also the, the advantage is that there will not be any eclipse from other planets also mm -hmm. in this region. So it is 24 by 7 observation of the sun is possible from this location. So that is the basis on which this uh, mission was planned. Uh, of course, there is a set of instruments uh, which is built on board. First to study the outer 
uh, surface of the sun, then the core mm -hmm. and the various phenomena which is taking place there, as you are aware, is the nuclear fusion reaction which is the source of energy mm. and the heat of the sun. So, uh, and there are a lot of uh, explosions and flares take place. The solar winds are created on mm. account of this. And the solar winds uh, contain a lot of charged particles mm -hmm. which affects the spacecrafts and, and our communication system and so on. The magnetic field also disturbs our magnetosphere and the communication mm. and so on. So, this is first to understand uh, what happens on the surface of the moon, the basic phenomena of the sun, heat yes. generation, how it is uh, getting propagated and emitted, and then later observe from L1 point the, the solar wind and its consequence and give advance warning to the terrestrial systems uh, to be on the safe mode okay. when such an event occurs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So these are the two primary objectives. In addition, of course, by observing the various phenomena which take place on the planet simultaneously from our observatories, it is possible to have some better understanding of the energy coupling between the sun and the earth. Okay. This is very, very important from the climate change studies. Of course, we all know that it is a carbon dioxide, methane, etc., the mm -hmm. greenhouse gases, which are responsible for uh, part of the uh, temperature rise on the globe. But a major chunk is coming because of the solar activity. Okay. And the variation in the solar activity is very, very important input in uh, having the better model of the climate change as well. So that way it is a very important mission uh, for studying the uh, various uh, phenomena on the planet Earth also. Yes. No, uh, no denying climate change is one of the biggest issues uh, that the world is grappling with. So, any more help in that regard, I think uh, our public uh, will understand how crucial that will be. But you mentioned that this has been a long planned, long wished for mission for ISRO. So, why do you think it has taken so long for this mission to become a reality only today? Well, one thing is uh, the challenge of... Uh, 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 making a spacecraft to uh, withstand hmm. the environments at L1 point. L1 yes. point, I think we have only some approximate idea about the temperature conditions, the solar radiation condition, hmm. and so on. Above all, the charged particles directly impinge on the spacecraft. To have a, a instrument developed which can withstand all these conditions is a challenging task. Okay. Um, then in addition, of course, uh, the, there is a prioritizing of the task. Yes. The yes. funds available, ISRO is uh, well known to be very uh, economical in implementing the program. Mm. But at the same time, they give the first priority for the program, which is uh, beneficial to the common man in the country. Mm -hmm. Only about 5% of its budget is spent on this uh, planetary explorations and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, there was a political factor as well. Mm. Uh, UPA two time, mm. the type of funding and support which was uh, coming out from the government was not that attractive. Mm -hmm. It is after the uh, Modi took over that there's a big momentum and the push was given to the space activities in the country. Mm. And that's also a factor which has contributed uh, to the mission preparation now. Okay, well, finally, it is going to be a reality. The launch is going to take place. And how big do you think it will be for India if we succeed in this too? And that too, right on the heels of the moon vision, which already, uh, you know, the world is going gaga over. But if we manage to succeed in the sun mission as well, how big do you think that will be for ISRO and the country? Uh, well, I think it's the next logical step after the moon, it's the sun. Yes. So, we are looking at it. And it is going to be a... Uh, of course, there's, there's a big challenge traveling this uh, on, on 15 million kilometers and taking almost about uh, 150 days. Uh, so that during the journey itself, we had to keep our fingers crossed, our uh, eyes and ears has to be open, and we had to watch the spacecraft very carefully mm -hmm. on its path and guide it to the precise location. These are all big events in front of us. Hope all will succeed, and we show to the world that uh, we are again the leaders in the space field. Absolutely. We are the leaders in the space field. Thank you, Mr. Naya, for joining us. And for those comments, you can also, of course, stay with CNN News 18 all day tomorrow as we will get you the latest on that launch as well.